Hello everybody and welcome to today's video in which we are going to be looking at the visual novel. It's a favourite genre of mine and you may have even noticed that I do produce my own. I'm not going to be talking about those today but I do. But it's a genre that I don't get to talk about as much as I'd like to on these YouTube videos mostly because visual novels aren't the most dynamic experiences and don't lend themselves well to a visual f a format like YouTube as a result. Nonetheless, I do have a topic I wanted to talk through today, so lucky me. Now, I'm recording this on the Nintendo Switch, and if you spend enough time on the eShop, you may have noticed that the Switch has a lot of visual novels being released for it over the last six months, and particularly since the start of the year. This makes sense, as it's a handheld form factor, which is ideal for low-intensity gameplay experiences like the visual novel, and it's just so comfortable to play while relaxing in bed, or sitting on a sofa with a cup of coffee on a Sunday morning. That's how I generally like to do my visual novels. The PlayStation Vita was the previous home for the genre, but with that console now well and truly legacy, developers have largely moved over to the Switch. One localization company that has been particularly active in the last six months is Dejika Games, which has dropped on us four visual novels, all from the one Japanese developer and publisher, Kogodo Studio. Earlier in this year, it dropped two Nurse Love titles, and recently it backed that up with two Yume Utsusu titles. Looking at these four is the point of this video, since they all share some common traits, are incredibly niche, and yet very much worthwhile. So even if you haven't heard of them before, and even if you are a fan of visual novels, that is entirely possible, you should probably be looking into them. The main point of commonality between all four of these games is that they're Yuri, or Girls Love. In fact, men almost don't show up at all in these titles, and that is just delightful. It's refreshing. They're all very heavy on the romance too, and it's handled in a very naturalistic way in each title. The storytelling doesn't go out of its way to draw attention to the Yuri stuff, it's just presented as the normal. For example, in the first of the Yume Utsusu titles, you play as one sister who is trying to reconnect with the other after their mother's divorced, and the background is dropped in so nonchalantly as though it was a mother and father divorce. Too often with Yuri games, uh, the, the game, the storytelling, goes out of its way to nod and wink about the same-sex relationships, and they come across as very juvenile as a result. Kogodo's work is far more restrained and intelligent about that. It's still very heavy on the fan service and sex themes, and some of these titles even have an R rating, R, R18 rating here in Australia, but the Yuri isn't played for giggles, and that's really important. As you can see from these video clips, the games are also gorgeous in their art direction, and that's another point of commonality between them. Kogoro is a tiny micro studio in Japan, I believe it only has around 25 employees, so even though it produces a lot of games, it doesn't have big, big budgets to work with with any individual title. So even in comparison to some other visual novel studios out there like Compile Heart or Experience Inc., there are some corners cut here. One trend in VNs, for example, is to use a technology called Live 2D, which allows for the animators to create characters that move around, even as, as they speak through their many, many lines within a game. The Kogodo titles don't have Live 2D to draw on, so as a result, the characters do look very static and simply jump between a handful of different emotions to suit the mood. And yet, for those budgetary limitations, the art direction in this game is gorgeous, with characters having beautiful designs and the key scenes that are scattered throughout each title having an incredible level of detail to them. What is interesting is that each of the titles within the same series can have different artists. So, for example, the two Nurse Love games actually look completely different to one another. And while that's a jarring transition to make when you do expect that there be some continuity between them, it never takes long to adjust to the new, equally gorgeous art design that you see in front of you. Each visual novel from this developer is quite lengthy too, and there are more than a few decisions that you need to make along the way to reach the endings. It is not a completely static experience. And that's where there is something truly special within the Kogodo games. While they do behave a little bit like slice of life titles for the most part, there's always something bubbling along just under the surface that really keeps you alert because the potential is always there that it could become something really shattering. It's always presented in the most subtle ways within the visual novels too. There's a single line here, or a slightly unusual event or observation there. And at first, you'll just gloss over them as an oddity, or perhaps a slightly clunky translation. But then you'll realise that no, these scenes are actually leaning towards something that could have pretty high impact. And I really do mean this. 
some of the stuff that happens in these games goes places. I'll never forget the first nurse love I played. My character was going about training to be a nurse, filled with the standard stereotypes for the slice of life genre and the protagonist. She's not particularly confident in who she is, and she has an almost obsessive admiration for all, everyone around her, everybody around her. As she goes through her day to day, she starts to have these moments where she's feeling like she's been stalked, or her sister jumps on her in a way that is blatantly approaching incest, and those are just the little hints that something's not quite right with this story, and it all rolls towards one of a series of endings, all of which work and feel like a logical conclusion within the story, so if you have the good ending, you know, things are good, but the bad endings can go some very, very bad places, and I'm not going to give away spoilers because you have to experience that for yourself, but they are dramatic. The other Nurse Love title isn't quite as viscerally extreme, but it has its moments too, and you could see there's more of a psychological play on the stresses of being a nurse. It was actually written by a properly qualified nurse, and there's something vaguely unsettling about the life of these critical health care workers that it depicts. Yume Utsusu, meanwhile, is focused on telling the story of game developers from the perspective of somebody who goes in know knowing nothing about game developers. Now, I'm not sure if game developers do spend so much time in the studio that they end up using the hot water sink to bathe, but I'd be hard-pressed to find a more perfect self-aware metaphor to the insanity of game development within a video game. It too has its moments of mystery to drag you along as well. The protagonist's sister, who always loved her as kids, can now barely speak to her, and when confronted about it by the protagonist, simply says, Demon. Again, I'm not going to give away what happens in the game, but it is beautifully written to keep the sense of mystery strong, while also presenting the world in a naturalistic enough frame that it all seems all too real. Now, do you know who else was particularly effective at doing that? Haruki Murakami himself, with his magnificent book 1Q84. Just like in that book, each of Kogodo's games finds a way to subvert normalcy. Sometimes it's overt and extreme, but equally often it's subtle and evocative. Sometimes it's deeply funny, while at other times it's dangerously serious. These games are all designed to make you think about just how disrupted normal life really is, and how difficult it can be to find your own place within it all, because these characters are young and still making it in the world. Finding your position, your place in the world, becoming you know, at peace with yourself, is a very big challenge, and this game kind of really, these games all address that topic really effectively. In other words, these visual novels are real page turners, and even given how many visual novels are out there and available for the Switch, I would highly recommend that you look at each of them as down-to-earth but cleverly deceptive and subversive little titles. Finally, I do want to also mention that it also helps that every single character is very lovable. It's rare for video games to have such large ensemble casts that all work together so effectively, but such is the quality, quality of Kogodo's writers that there's no best girl in these. They're all best girls. Well, actually, okay, let's, that's a bit of a lie. Amy from Nurse Love Syndrome, the second one, the one that's on the screen there in front of you right now, she is definitely a step up above. But it is so rare for me to step away from a game, any game really, like in every single character, even if on initial impressions I dislike them. And that happened a couple of times when I was playing these ones. There were a couple of characters where I didn't really gel with them at first, and Nana, which is the blonde on the screen there, is a good example of that. She, when you meet her for the first time, she's wearing a nurse uniform and she's just a pile of terrible nurse jokes uh, made, sorry, she's wearing a maid uniform and she's just a pile of terrible maid jokes and deliberately fan-servicing nonsense. And uh, I did not get along with that character at first, especially when in the context of everything else, it was fairly light-hearted, but it wasn't silly and Nana came across as quite silly. But Obviously, I perse persevered with the game because everything else about it was really in, you know, uh, engaging to me. And then I found myself really liking Nana as the story went along and I learned more about her. Mm -hmm. That is quite, quite common with um, Kogodo's games. You might not have a great initial impression of a character, but just in real life, if you give them a chance, you can, might discover that uh, you actually like them more than you think you did. So again, that's another element of where it, it's such an effective uh, real-life kind of slice of life. Uh, metaphor. 
Okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. I hope I've managed to convince you to look at a couple of Kogodo games. Dejika Games sells them at a premium on the eShop, yes, but they are worth it. They are, once again, very lengthy visual novels. They will take you quite a while to work through. You will enjoy the characters, and they are just meticulously presented. Um, they're just very difficult to put down. When I was playing every single one of these games, I found it very difficult to actually play anything else because I just wanted to come back and find out was, what was happening with these characters that I'd fallen in love with. So thank you very much for watching as always. Please do consider liking and subscribing me on YouTube. Uh, I've got some great news. I've hit, hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube, so thank you to everybody for joining in and um, I hope that I continue to produce videos that you find interesting. If you do enjoy, enjoy my stuff as well, please do consider backing me on Patreon. Once again, thanks again and we will see you next video.